Hey everyone, time for some more videos. I have been quite busy for the last couple of weeks, um, running a big party, sort of two years on celebration for me and my wife's wedding anniversary. Um, but that's done now. I'm very, very tired. But I thought I'd sneak in, sneak in a gauntlet video just for you. And uh, you know what? It's an auspicious day because there's been a patch. There's a patch, they've uh, made some big changes to Gauntlet, well, big-ish changes. A bunch of weights have been adjusted, so the card frequencies have changed. Um, it was like, I think 4-0 runs are slightly more exciting in terms of rewards. Um, but the most significant thing they've changed is that you can now apparently see, there's like a little icon you can hover, and see which cross-faction cards your opponent had in their deck at the beginning of the match, which I think will make quite a big difference to... Not feeling like you're getting ripped off when your opponent blows you out with some cards that they're like not supposed to have. So let's see how things flow. We've played we've played every faction at least once. Um obviously we're very much still in the learning phase, but I was thinking the next for the next couple of runs I might just try and really try hard it, like pick what I think is the best faction. Um and try and figure out whether that is the best faction. Um or, you know, um, just try and optimize and get a feel for how to make the most powerful decks I can and then maybe after that I'll start memeing a bit more or, or experimenting with some niche stuff and seeing what I can dredge up there. Um, so I think it's usually a good idea to get a handle on, on the basics, you know. Um, so of these, I am told that uh, Agro Songhai has been reined in a little bit, which seems pretty sensible. My, my Songhai draft that I recorded was very fun, but it was also basically playing constructed, um, which feels a little rich. I wasn't too impressed with Abyssians, and I didn't see any mention of changes to them in the patch notes. Um, I think Magmar, Magmar have had some, they've, they've, there's been some card changes as well, and Magmar have had a couple that could be interesting. Um, but honestly, I think the strongest is probably Vanar because Hailstone Prison is so good. Um, I think in my last Vanar draft I had three of them and they were all fantastic. Like I'm, I think I fizzled the card every single time in those games. Um, so let's let's start with Vanar. We'll see how that goes. I have a Ghost Link, some Blood Tear and a Femal Shroud. This is pretty good. Dragon Lord, kind of a niche card. Lady Lock, very strong. Flame Blood, Warlock, Keeper of the Veil, Zurel. I mean, Flame Blood and Zurel could not be more different. Keeper is kind of a cool card with either of those, to be honest. Um, but I quite like this pick of just three utility two drops. Each of these has some greater value later on in the game, like this. The Ghost Link cycles an extra card. Blood Tear gives you a bit of interaction. And then we have the Shroud. It's always nice to have Dispel. I mean, Vanar don't like Dispel, but this also means that I I'm, I'm just don't have to prioritize two drops ever. Um, Mesmerize, Razorback, Araki Headhunter. This is a good Headhunter. We've already got a bunch of opening gambits. Artifact Hunter, another Blood Tear, and a Hailstone. Force and Rhino and several. I don't really think I want two Blood Tears, and the Artifact Hunter has always been a bit eh, but obviously Hailstone Prison is fantastic. Big draw to the faction. I think I actually might want this, though. Um, I think Mesmerize is quite a good card. It might be difficult to get really big value out of it, but um, I'm interested in seeing how it plays out. Uh, and then we've also got, like I said, the Iraqi. We've already got several opening gambit minions making the Iraqi quite threatening. And Razorback is kind of nice as a finisher or a way to push some damage. I don't know, maybe I should just pick the ranged unit and ignore all this stuff. Um... I think let's go with this. I like, I want to try out Mesmerize. I think this is a good Iraqi tech deck. Razorback has a lot of potential synergies. Auto Forger, Fenrir, Winterblade, Astral Crusader, Flash Freeze, Winterblade, Avalanche. Okay, this is all pretty trash. Um, I think this, I mean, the Fenrir is a good card. The Auto Forger is a pretty, is a very high ceiling card. And then I think Winterblade is just fine. This is all crap. 
Jaxi and Dancing Blades. That's going to be hard to beat. Frostfire, Jaxi, Cryogenesis. Well, it's a good effort. Uh, Mesmerize. Is that a, that's a Rust Crawler and then a Sojourner. Um, so we've got... Currently we have no Vespers, I want to say. Yes, we have no Vespers, which makes this pack a bit risky. Um, I'm going to take this. We have so many two drops, which is good because we can easily cut them. Um, Ash Method, Ancient Grove, and Boundless Courage. Those are all a bit naff. Seismic, Hellstone Golem, Spirit of the Wild. This looks pretty strong. And Sarlacc Sensei, yeah. So Spirit of the Wild did get a little buffed. Um, it now act activates your general as well, which is kind of spicy. Um, they called out the particular combo with Snowpiercer in the patch notes. So we can, I mean, I, I like Snowpiercer in general. I think it's a nice card. We've, we have a Winterblade for a little bit of damage, but Snowpiercer is obviously where it's at. Um, and then we have an Aspect of the Mountains, which is a fantastic card, and then a Hellstone Golem, which I'm always happy to have in my deck. Just such a good turn two play. Snow Chaser, Dragon Lord, that is a Vesper. Crystal Wisp, Rejuvenator, Dark Nemesis. The, I mean, this is just a control deck in a pack. That's pretty awesome. Fenrir Warmaster, Crystal, Cloaker, Borean Bear. Borean Bear sucks, although it is a Vesper. This pack has two Vespers in it. We didn't pick the Vesper Synergy cards, but if they come up again, we've now got them. Um, I think the Wolf that comes out of the Fenrir is a Vesper as well for, like, Frostfire. I think I like this more, though. Like, these cards are fine, but... We love having a bit of healing. We wanna. I kind of want to bulk out this curve a little bit. It is two draw, but you do need to play some good cards. Um, I think getting ahead on mana is fantastic, and a two-one body is not terrible in a world with blood tear being two mana and therefore not very good. And then dog nemesis is a pretty nuts card. Demands removal. Yeah. Another Fenrir, I'll be Sage, Boundless Courage. Fireblaze, Obelisk, Primus Fist. Scarab Golem. I have no idea. Oh, is that a, that's a Crimson Oculus, the Mark of Solitude. Mark of Solitude is pretty good with, so we have one range unit so far. Um, which ain't much. I remember this being, I remember the Mark being kind of annoying actually last time I played. So possibly we want to pass on that. I kind of like this, to be honest. I mean, maybe I should stop picking two drops. But I think this isn't really an Albi's deck. We have one cheap spell, plus the Boundless Courage, which is not a fantastic card, usually. Fenrir is good, but um, I kind of like this. People will obviously know the Fireblaze Obelisk is in my deck, and it doesn't have the same impact it normally does, mind. Maybe this is better. Now let's 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 take these. I think Primus Fist is, is also just great. Ross Crawler Chaos Elemental. Decent. Hearth Sister Albi Sage. We like a Hearth Sister, not so much the Albeast, but um big fan of Hearth Sister. Wings of Paradise, I think that's a Mogwai. And then a blue tip scorpion. That's I mean Wings is good, but the other two are a bit. I guess Mogwai is quite good with both of the other cards in that pack. Well, this is basically between Rust Crawler or Hearth Sister and then some baggage that they bring with them. I guess Chaos Elemental is mildly better than Albi Sage here. But we're not, I think we're about halfway through the draft, so we could we could try and prioritize some spells, and Hearth Sister is a much better card than Rust Crawler usually. Um let's go with this. Dragon Lord Boring Bear. Flash Freeze, Boundless Courage, Serpenti Windrunner. Ugh. Well, these are all pretty uh, underwhelming. I think, given that I've picked an, uh, an Albi Sage, it seems reasonable to take these. Um, I guess Boundless with Spirit of the Wild is kind of alright. Like, Windrunner is the good card of this lot, but... It's... It's not... That good. It dies kind of easily. And I really don't want this Serpenti. That's dead weight. Let's go with this. Another Razorback and a Bone Chill Barrier. There's the combo. Polarity Snowpiercer. 
That is kind of tempting. Or oh, we've got Crystal Wisp, Saber Swine Tiger, Aspect of the Fox. This is quite a bad Aspect of the Fox deck because most of our creatures are kind of small. So it's going to be difficult to get value from it. You know, we've only seen one Hailstone Prison and I passed it. it sucks. Uh, we do get a Snow Piercer for the combo with uh, Spirit of the Wild. Polarity is good with LB Sage, but pretty rubbish otherwise. But it does kill Obelisks, so maybe it's worth scooping up on that basis because there was something in the patch notes about making Vitruvian less just about Dervishes, but I suspect Obelisks will still be a core cool part of this format. Let's go with this. Primus Mist Arclight Sentinel Artifact Hunter. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Storm Aratha. Oh, that's cool. And another Winterblade. Or a Voice of the Wind and a Bone Chill Barrier. We do have a lot of cheap minions, so Voice of the Wind could be good, but this is fantastic. Strong 2-drop. Fantastic 3-drop. Artifact Hunter with two good artifacts in our deck. Snapping this off. Gravity Well, Aspect, Frostbolt, Naga, so let's remove that. Some more two drops, we really don't need them. And then Dream Gazer and Sojourner. It's kind of interesting, actually. I think it's hard to argue anything this, though, other than this, though. I mean, this isn't the best Gravity Well deck. We do have a Razorback. Um, and I guess it can at least pin people in place for our Infiltrate cards to work, but. <laughs> but I think the other two make it worth it. Hey, a Hailstone Prism, finally. And then two rubbish cards. Boo. Razorback, Silhouette, Tracer, Flash, Freeze, Chromatic. I mean, Chromatic's pretty good. I really want this Hailstone. I, I want as many Hailstones as I can get, kind of. Do we have any Vespers whatsoever? Is this card just blank? Yes, this is a 3 mana 2 3. And I don't really want a second copy of Mesmerize. So maybe I should just take this because at least these cards do something. Um, I mean, this RB stage is starting to look good. If we can get another one, we might have a bit of a deck there, but. Hmm. I think I have to do this. This is very sad. Arthur says to Primus Fist, Frostfire. Rejuvenator Voice of the Wind, Pandora Flash Freeze. I'm taking this. I think my deck is kind of bad, but what we do have is some stalling tools, um, some card flow, some value plays, and then we need ways to kill our opponent. And Pandora adds another one to the list. I, these packs are both great. Um, I think these, you know, Rejuvenator Voice is fantastic. We don't really need more two drops and the Frostfire is not so good. So like we can pass on this, but this is normally something I'd be very happy to see. But I'm taking this Pandora. Phalanx R under the flash freeze. We really don't want the third flash freeze. Um several plane or scout polarity. No. So that leaves Prophet of the White Palm, Black Locust, and Cryogenesis. I'll probably cut whatever I pick here, but if I can get a couple of Vespers in the last couple of packs we might be able to get some use out of this cryo and if not i'll just cut them that's fine fair rare war talent playing our scouts fine saber spawn tiger boring bears fine several gravity well silverton corsair I think all of these are just snap cuts. I'll take this in case I decide I want the Vesper. And the Saber Spine Tiger is a decent card as well. Snow Piercer, Polarity, Boundless. And to play Blazing Spines, Primus Fist, Flash Freeze. Again, this is all this is all just rubbish. Um, all just rubbish. I wouldn't mind the Snow Piercer, the second Snow Piercer, but this is all. Um which of these so I think what I should do then is take the pack that will enable me to cut other packs and keep the cards if I forget exactly you know which packs were where um 
but I want to try and enable myself to cut other cards, essentially, by taking these. But again, I have absolutely no idea. Like, I would gladly not play anything in here except, you know, I like a Primus Fist, but we're not short on them or two drops generally. Ditto with either of these artifacts. I guess Blazing Spines might be something nice to have access to. I don't rate the card, but it's not that bad. Sure. Oh, God. Right, that's it. That's all we get. Okay, so I think this pile... I mean, Black Locust... Black Locust is quite annoying. But we don't have any way of buffing it. I don't believe. We can turn it into a 5-5, but that removes its other text. So, not super helpful. Um... Right, let's start by cutting this Boundless Courage and one of the Flash Freezes. We are not in need of Flash Freezes. Yeah, let's cut Let's cut this pile. Let's cut this Borean Bear and Saber Spine Tiger. And then I should probably cut the Blazing Spines and the Winter Blade. There's so many other things I could cut. <laughs> Goodness. Um... Man, I was like, you know what, let's make Vanar, let's play some Vanar, I think they're gonna, you know, I think they're the best faction. Maybe they just nerfed some of the, uh, the, the, I don't know if they nerfed the appearance rate of Hailstone Prism. Um, maybe I should have just forced picking them anyway. I'm not sure. We don't, we're not completely lacking in ways to interact with the opponent. Uh, let's just replace for stuff to do. Um, I mean, Flash Freeze isn't bad, but it's it's like a... It's not the sort of card I want to be playing this early on. I think I want to keep this against Songhai. So I should replace... Yeah, I'm not going to be able to play this till turn 4. There we go, there's the Hellstone. That's what we want. Our opponent's probably not going to remove this Jaxi, so... Um, we can probably just slam the Hailstone next time. Where do we go? Oh, I kind of have to kill that, don't I? Um, those cards do the same thing. How punished am I if I just slam a hailstone golem? No, they'll just kill it and get up on cards. I have to remove this Widowmaker, which is somewhat painful. What I should do then is just play this. Punch this uh, and pass. I'm gonna leave the Jaxi where it is, I think. I guess I could move it forward. But I think I'm better off leaving it where it is. Maybe I should have brought it up here, because they can move up here and still kill the Hearth Sister. And then the Jaxi can come in and trade with stuff. Oh, this is fine. Okay. Twin Strike. That's all right. I have a ranged unit now. And a Razorback. That's kind of good, actually. I mean, this just gives us a win condition, right? Um, speaking of win conditions, there's a Pandora. These cards all look kind of fine. I think I will replace the Hailstone because the Owl Beast has a higher ceiling. Um, I should, I think, more firmly prevent my opponent from reaching the tile at the top. We're going to move this away, so if they blow up the razor back, they still can't reach it. Kill this. I don't think I'm going to trade damage, because my opponent is playing Song High. They can, they can burst me later. I am ahead on board, but like, you know, with a 3-1 ranged unit, it's pretty easy to convert that pressure into winning the game regardless of whether I trade damage now. I'm not going to lack um, an ability to hit my opponent in the face if I get away with this. But if I let them, if I'm too incautious and I let them tick my life total down, they could just kill me. So I think it's better to not attack there. I don't know, maybe I'm high enough. No, they could easily just answer this board and then I'll be at a disadvantage for having lowered my life total for them. 
This is not a particularly resilient board. They are at least having to think about it, which is nice. We've also got the uh, the dream team here of Albi Sage Flash Freeze. What I might do next turn is put a Crystal Wisp and an Albi's down um, using the Monotile. Even if they wipe this, that's still pretty decent. That's getting chromatic colded at some point. Another twin strike. Pretty good, pretty good. Okay, so I can Albeast, Crystal Wisp, Flash Freeze. Just Albeast Wisp. That seems bad. Or I can Albeast Chromatic Cold. I don't think I have a good line that involves not using the Monotile. I guess Albeast, Flash Freeze, Pass is kind of an option, but... Actually, the Flash Freeze kills this because I can punch it. So what I should do is play the Albeast here. Kill the Chakri Avatar with my face, and then next turn I can move the Albeast up and play Pandora. Um, so let's do a replace... Arclight Sentinel. Pretty good. That does something similar, I can punch this. Arclight, Crystal Wisp. No Albeast. But if they kill the Crystal Wisp, I get a Pandora anyway. Is that better? No, I think it's a good idea to play the Albeast. This card snowballs pretty well. And we do have more spells in hand. So if my opponent forces me to react to something next turn... Chromatic is uh, is there, and it will also buff my Albeast. Dancing Blades, question mark? Nope, that's fine. I mean, it means I don't get my Pandora, but I don't mind that too much. Um, so a Chromatic on this... Vitamin XD. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Why? Uh, so I can kill this with Arclight Sentinel. Um, chromatic this and punch it. That's all my mana. And then equip a Winter Blade. Nice. Feels clean. So exactly what happens here. I presume it doesn't get the 7 HP back, right? Oh, it does. Oh, that's awkward. In that case, what I need to do is punch this with the Albeast. Um, how do I position this? I don't have another choice. Punch this. Do I keep... I should... Does it matter? I'm going to decide whether it's a good idea for me to be near my opponent or the Arclight. Me, I think. I want to leave this Monotile available. Um, so... Punch this. I should play this here, actually, because then it can contest the tile. I mean, I don't really need the tile next turn. I guess that's a lie. I have Crystal Wisp Aspect of the Mountains. That's pretty good. <clears throat> or Ghost Link's Aspect of the Mountains. Then I draw a card. Not that drawing a card is particularly necessary or even desirable in uh, two draw. But the Winter Blade here is really nice because it makes it very difficult for my opponent to burst me down with repeated spells. Or oh, this thing. Wait, I forgot to check their um, deck info. How do I... Oh, you can't show it. I need to turn the setting on, but... Where's the thing? Player details. And most of this says one Shadow Dancer. Nice! Okay, that's good. That's a nice feature. I'm keen. Uh, yeah, anyway, here's Wonderwall, uh, I think is how this is going to go. So, this goes here. Let's just sort of box my opponent in a little bit. I may as well play the links, right? Let's just get rid of this. Okay. 
Ugh. Damn it. Right, now I hit them, right? Because I can't die next turn because of Winter Blade. Um, fair enough. Oh, well, that worked pretty well. Game, please. I am clicking. I am pressing anywhere to continue. Repeatedly. Uh, I'm going to pause this recording and restart Duelist 2. And as though by magic, I fixed the crash. Let's go for round 2. I'm really curious about what it is that causes the first match of Gauntlet Q time to be very, very quick. And subsequent matches are much louder. Much louder? Much. My hamster's making loud noise in the background. And two sentences cross my brain at the same time. I apologize if you can hear any squeaking, as might be associated with a small mammal uh, going ham. Well, I went over to ask her to stop, and I think I scared her. Sorry. Sorry, small hamster. Anyway, Q times. Yes. The first match is nice and quick, and then the subsequent matches take a lot longer. I'm not really sure why. Maybe it pulls from a much greater pool of players the first time around, or maybe there's just a ton of people who play one round and then abandon their deck. I don't know. Um, either way. Time for more game recommendations to fill the time. Um, or summon my next opponent the moment I start talking, as the case may be. Look at that. I didn't even mention the name of it. I'll have to save it for round three. Magical. Oh, what is this? I drafted so many two drops. Good. Okay, we found one. Um, I want to replace for a better two drop. Because Hearth Sister is good to have later and also dies easily. That's my opponent got King Aaron. They've got an inner focus. That's quite scary, actually. Um, let's replace. I think the Artifact Hunter is just fine to throw on too. Whereas Frostborn Naga is more situational. So let's do this. Okay, fine. She really is uh, going a bit nuts over there. I have to do some selective muting. I'm not talking. All right, big boy chaos elemental. That's kind of scary, actually. I could punch it and heal myself. That might be smart. If it lands near the half sister, then we can trade. I am generally in favor of punching Chaos Elemental to disturb opponent's plans. If I attack it and it lands... No, there's nothing I can do that will disturb my turn, so let's do that. Cool. Uh... The next question is, can I find a 3-drop? Because if I can, I can play... It in the middle and then Mana Forger behind. That would kind of be the dream. So let's replace this. We do have two copies and it is expensive and more situational. I could play this Primus Fist and Mana Forger, but I think it's probably better to do this. If we hit Winter Blade, we can just slam it. Let's go. Getting the Winter Blade out of the hand, I think, is a good idea. Well, this is upsetting. I used to do this in Keep of Earth, Natural Selection, Chaos Elemental. Good times. 
Um, I guess we want this mana tile, but we don't have any use for it immediately, so we can just defend it with Hailstone Golem. I can go here, put the Hailstone behind me. Or I can go here, put the Hailstone where I am now, but I don't want the Chaos Elemental to trade into it. Um, Wisp is kind of good, actually. <coughs> is it too spicy to put a Wisp in the center, a Mana Forge here? That's such a... Yeah, I can't play both of these out, because then the whole point of getting both of these cards down is it makes Aspect of the Mountains more efficient. But if I play all my cheap creatures, the Aspect of the Mountains does nothing. So I think I need to do this. Here is good enough. I don't mind if the Chaos Elemental connects face. I have a heal in hand. I'm hoping they don't have another natural selection. That'll be a bit sad. Don't you dare. This sucks. <laughs> this is the best Chaos Elemental I've ever seen. That's also scary. At least if the alley's gone up there, we can punch it. Okay, it is. It's only pulls minions, then they're not generals. Yeah, okay. Oh, what now? Lose this game, that's what's now. Um, that does nothing. I think we have to get aggressive on this several somehow. Which does allow my opponent the use of this model tile. What I can do is take the monotile with something, just to get it down there. Like this Crystal Wisp, for instance. This is just a denial play. And then what I can do is go here. The Warmaster is reasonably sticky. Here it's away from the Chaos Elemental, so if they want to trade the Chaos Elemental, they have to shoot it with several, which means they want to shoot this with several, or me. Um, Allowing me to keep my 2-1 for potential trades. Or force my opponent to walk over and attack it. There's an interesting effect in this game where like... You're often put in these really bad positions. Like this, right? This is a very this is a very losing... That last turn was like, you know, extremely bad for me or whatever. Um, but what you... There's often... These like little victories that you can make where you kind of force your opponent to do something at least slightly annoying. Like forcing them to attack one of your units with their general, which means their general is like maybe not in the most optimal position it could be in. And those things I found they do add up. They do tend to they give you ways back into the game. Um because you know you buy yourself an extra turn because your opponent isn't in position to hit you two turns later because they I had to walk to the side to get a free kill on a unit. That sort of thing. And similarly, you can kind of recognize when these things are being done to you. Oh my god. I mean, on the flip side, I still have a Fenral Warmaster. Um, so things could definitely be worse in that department. I am just, like, dead, <laughs> though. Uh, I can Polarity the blue tip to save damage. I don't know if that's worth it. The Aspect of the Mountains look kind of good. <laughs> Maybe I'm just supposed to punch the Scorpion um, and take my lumps that way. I can Razorback to kill this without having to use the Aspect, but I don't think the Razorback really achieves anything else. This certainly isn't seeing any play here. 
I think it's meant to be aspect and polarity, but I don't know which sort of. I don't know what targets what. It could also be Monoforger Emerald Rejuvenator. I can like punch. I can polarity this and trade. And then just play a Rejuvenator next to me and kill this 4 1. It's not completely awful, right? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Oh god, I'm running out of time. Okay, I ran out of time. But I at least played all my. I, I at least played everything. I spent my mana. But I wanted to move this over and kill the 4 1. So they can just trade here. Honestly, but that might be worth it. It's like a card for a card, and I am up eight life. It's like better than, better than Earth Sphere, right? And Earth Sphere is a good card in a lot of situations. Or oh, no. Never mind. On the right side, that's all their mana. You see the cognitive dissonance of work here, right? It's like all of these lines are terrible for me. Look, the Chaos Elemental can't damage me because I'm shielded from Winterblade. Haha. -ha. Um, like, all of these plays that are happening are dreadful for me, but <laughs> I'm getting what I can out of them. So, let me think. Um, the Aspect, I can punch this in Aspect to kill the Red Singer. I need to play something else to aspect though. And I don't have a two drop in hand. I can also stun it. Um, and then aspect it later potentially. I need to not I need to find a way to not die though. Um, especially as I know they have inner focus in hand, which is quite threatening. Um Snow Piercer. Doesn't help here. I mean it would in theory help if I could attack this without dying, but that is not the case. Um, this is tough. Is there a way I can just play Dark Nemesis? I don't think so. I don't think I can kill the Singer then, can I? Because I can't play Aspect of the Mountains on anything. Um, so I think I have to play Mesmerize. Which means I may as well play the Owl Beast Sage. I'm almost certainly just dead. But if they don't have the burst damage... This looks like a player with burst damage. I forgot that that would kill that. Okay, yes, they have the burst damage. Well, that bad turn was bad after all. What happened there? It was the double. It was the double natural selection. Like they hailstone prison me. Um, double natural selection with a, you know, having started with a chaos elemental was uh, pretty gross. Like the 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 hailstone golem with most three drops, the hailstone golem doesn't die there um, because you know the three drop will have two or three attack, so. We, they kind of high rolled their opening, uh, in a sense. But it looked like their deck was just like pretty well equipped to deal with whatever. Anyway, um, this is a good three drop. I would like to find some other early game so that I could use this for value. I'm going to replace this, and what I'd like to hit is Ghost Links, and I can double double 2 drop in the middle. Okay, I don't think we care too much about this yet. Give it against Mana Forger. Is that worth it? If they have Demonic Lure, they can kill the Forger. 
But that's still a one for one. That's not that bad. I'll take I'll take the I'll take those odds. There's two draw, you can get away with doing dumb stuff anyway. This is a really nice draw actually. Because if they're gonna come up and trade with my stuff and make Wraithlings, the Vraswan Naga will allow me to hit them, make another Wraithling, and then play this, blowing up the last artifact charge and hopefully clearing both Wraithlings, but if not, at least one. Oh my god, Lantern Fox. I forgot to check, they've got a Crystal Poker in the Fox, okay. Lantern Fox, they have five cards in hand. I could kill it, I've got an Arclight Sentinel. I only get one Phoenix Fire. Um, or I can just punch it twice because it doesn't actually make a difference. Oof. Rough one, eh? I really want this Primus Fist actually because I can play the Sentinel and the Fist together. Like, move down. Sentinel here. Primus. So it's all the way down, doesn't it? So they can't kill it next turn. Sentinel here. Slot this. Primus. Buff the team. Trade here. They get one Phoenix Fire. I guess they can just Phoenix Fire this Mono Forger. But I'd rather make them use it. Dancing Blades. Is that better than all that fancy stuff? Just take the tile. Move forward. Punch. D-Blades. It's got to be, right? They still get one Phoenix Fire, but it's not too bad. This Mortar Forger is actually useless, uh, but my opponent doesn't know that. <laughs> so hopefully they'll spend most of their turn killing it with said Phoenix Fire. Um, and then I get some tempo and we can... Nope, they're playing a Blood Moon Priestess. That is actually extremely scary if it... Oh god, it got the block. Right, we have an RNG play we can make. I can punch this Wraithling and then... 75% of the time it spawns somewhere that isn't where it currently is. And then I can walk over, punch this, and play Arclight Sentinel to kill it. No, I can't do that if the very thing spawns here either. Hmm. Oh, never mind. <laughs> that solves that problem. Um, I'm pretty sure it has a lot of Wraithlings. Right, how do I want to work this? Um, do I just like buff my Mana Forger and trade and keep this Dancing Blaze on high HP? Is that worth it? So I can go face? Probably not particularly worth it, right? I think I am playing Primus Fist this time though. Just punch that. Play this. Uh, oh, I messed up. I let the Modern Forger sit in attack range of my opponent. But they can't kill this on board, so they. Again, we're obliged to find some interaction. Ooh. That's spicy. Okay. Oh, alright. Just going face for six. That's fine. Like, this is annoying and kind of bad for me, but not that bad. The only downside really is my threats are both seven mana. I should replace one of them. 
think. Or I should replace this. Oh, that's pretty good. You see, it doesn't really do anything. No, I think all I'm doing is like... This. Super weak turn. I may as well punch them. I don't I didn't need it I didn't need something incredibly strong there. Because I do have a Pandora next turn, but like that was weak. That's quite scary. I mean I'm still just playing this, but it's a little scary. Um I gotta run away, because this, this is the sort of game state where my opponent is looking to end the game and I'm looking to let them not do that before they die to Pandora. Um Frenzy. Like the hitting the Pandora is promising. I've never been able to figure out what Eclipse is. Is it like a floating cow person or something? Shadow Nova, okay. That's damage. There's my Emerald Rejuvenator. I will need it. Um. They kind of have me dead here, but I do have a gravity well to protect myself a little bit. Um, this is six damage, seven, eight. Polarity. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Oh my god. You know... Sometimes when you talk to people who are like new to card games and they put like some really weird niche card in their deck and you're like, why are you running this card? And they look at you like full of enthusiasm they go, oh well you know, if I have this in play and then I have this in play and then I play this it gets plus five, plus five, or whatever. And you're like, <laughs> pat them on the head and tell them that they're sweet. Um, or whatever appropriate equivalent of that is. Um, that's what just happened. That was the like, well, if I have my Pandora in play and it doesn't die, and then I get to attack my opponent with it, and I'd have this polarity, <laughs> they take 10. <laughs> I did actually used to play polarity. I've played polarity on ladder. Yeah, multiple copies of Polarity back in the day in Duelist 1 in um, in Arcanist Fae in the like the Arcanist Fae days I liked having it as an option it was basically Divine Bond um, in that list because you, you flip your enormous Owl Beasts and other buffed Arcanists um, it's just a good way of making the, the deck a little faster a little more combo-y um, I think in, in the end the controlling builds were the sort of the controlling builds won out as being like the best ones in tournament play at least um but that was a that was a development unearthed by uh better players than me um but you could you could polarity people and it would work Doing the, uh, the fabled turn one Araki here. Very nice. My opponent doesn't have any extra faction cards in their deck, which is also nice. Um, I don't super mind them playing across ones here because, unbeknownst to our opponent, my turn sucks. I could, I, I could honestly do this. Like Primus Fist plus Mesmerize. Nah, it's weak. 
Double Primus Fist, though. That's not weak at all. That's 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 big numbers. Uh, there's this annoying thing where if I play... I want to play the other Primus Fist. I guess I don't know. I can play it here, actually. But then it doesn't buff anything. If I want to, my Primus Fists to buff each other, they have to be next to each other. I can play them sort of here and here, or here and here, but it's too, you know, it feels too weak, right? It's too defensive. Um, no, what I should probably do is simply move forward, punch this. The game did something weird there. I was still controlling my hierarchy. And then play the Primus first. I think the sensible line is to play it more aggressively. So I lose one point of power, but then I can do this, actually. And my opponent can obviously take this tile, but I'm in position to trade with wherever they put on it next turn with um, a buff Daraki. And if they don't use it, then I, uh, you know, I now have a lot of mana tile access. Maybe this is slightly aggressive and I should have kept it down here. But I think over committing to Araki and trying to get it to like a 9-3 and then connect face is like on the rare occasion you do that, it's not even it's not necessarily that good unless you've got, you know, a good amount of damage to follow it up. Because it'll just die. Um Okay, I mean this is a pretty good place to play a snow piercer. And I can also play another minion as well. Um, let's cut, yeah, I'll cut the mesmerize. Chromatic. Yeah, I think this is a pretty straightforward turn. Putting down a Primus Fist, playing a Snowpiercer, killing this. So my opponent does have access to the lower monotile, but we've got a 6-3 for contesting the middle of the board. We're nice and big, so we're a bit forbidding to attack into. Uh, we can make good trades next turn to gain tempo. And then also the hand is decent. So it's an iron cliff. Rust crawler. Boo. Boo, I say. Oh well. I got I, I got some value out of it along the way. It's fine. Actually, this is quite annoying. Martyrdom. You know what? I don't super mind my Iraqi trading for a martyrdom. That's pretty good. I'll take that. True strike. Uh, I mean, that does put me up on resources compared to my opponent here. But I don't really have anything to do with that uh, position. I guess Winterblade, Fenrir, Blood Tear is kind of a line of play. Is that worth it? To be honest, it probably is. I would Albi's Chromatic, but I can't because I need to move. Um, so I should replace one of these, I think. Like it's two draw, I can kind of get away with going down cards a little bit. In the name of, you know, again, gaining tempo. This Blood Tear might be able to trade on board with something in a little bit. And it eats up this Mana Tile, so my opponent can't use it against me. Um, oh god, this worse. I mean, it, it does give me the LB Sage Tempo Play Dream, but yeah, I think I'm just going to make this uh, incredibly unsatisfying turn. That was the wrong one I meant to send. I meant to send the crying one, but oh well. It's pretty similar to the turn my opponent just had, to be fair. But... Yeah. We kind of weak turns from us both. <laughs> There's definitely cards in this game where you can ooh, that's that's the holy emulation positioning. Don't do it, please. Not like this. Okay. That I am extremely fine with. Oh, they hit me? Alright. You can do that. Um, is this an owl beast? 
I really don't want to flash freeze just to buff the Owl Beast. None of these cards do anything whatsoever. I mean, my opponent clearly hasn't got anything either, but that also does nothing. <laughs> I am greatly displeased. Um, I guess I can just play the Owl Beast and stun my opponent. It's kind of cute. Um, but I think I'm better off playing just... Do I just play it normally and let them hit it as a 4-4? That seems weak as well. I, I think I like stunning my opponent here, actually. Oh, I just played that on the wrong row. I... I was worried this would happen. Um, oh good, we drew a good card. Right. All is well. We're going to play Pandora next turn. My opponent can clear this stuff if they want. It should be okay. Um, yeah, I was worried that I would just play the spell the way you just play spells. You know, you just throw it out and not actually select the correct board. At least I still have the extra two toughness on my uh, L Beast, but I would of course have preferred my opponent to have two less HP and also be stunned and not be able to do exactly what they just did, uh, which was quite a nice play. Um, no, I'm sad. Oh, well. You live and learn. We still have a Pandora. We can kill the 3-5 uh, the on board right now. We can still kill that on board right now. Is there some cute... Like, if I draw Flash Freeze, it's kind of cool, right? Didn't. Oh, well. Um... Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna clear this and play the play the big girl. My opponent's already played two martyrdoms. Let's hope they don't have more flying. We are still we're up on cards. We're even on life. We're ahead on board. Um, things are going okay, despite my misclick, misplay, whatever you want to call it. Pandora is actually one of my favorite cards. I folks who have been watching me for a long time and have a good memory might uh, recall that my opponent has drafted so much removal and unfortunately for them all my cards are bad so they're just using premium removal on naff cards um, oh, this would be a good spot for a mesmerize wouldn't it um, but no I had to throw it away for some reason um, this is kind of scary, actually. This second sun is pretty intimidating. Um, but they did fix Divine Bond. It now sets the... Uh, basically, it's the similar ability. Oh, wait. Is that plus 8 plus 0 oh apply after the Divine Bond buff? Because if so, it will still be 16 attack. If so, that is kind of a subtle buff to this card. Um, I can play a Body Blocker to help with that, though. I kind of want to play this Dark Nemesis, but I shouldn't. Um, Hearth Sister. Ooh, I can kill this with Hearth Sister and Dancing Blades. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah. Feels a little weird not to be attacking my opponent in this spot, but... Um, I think I can just run them out of stuff. I mean, you can't really run somebody out of stuff entirely in 2-draw. But I can try and get them to the point where they have nothing good to do. More Sunrises. Is this another Martyrdom? No, okay. So I call them another healing effect, presumably. No, they're just punching that and passing. Oh yeah, that's all their mana. Well, now I play Dark Nemesis, right? We do have to get rid of this, though. I can play Dark Nemesis Mana Forger. 
But what do I play this Razorback? Because it kill it lets me kill the Sunrise cleanly. I can even hit my opponent if I want. Oh, you know what I can do actually? I can do gravity while Razorback. It's kind of cool. Um yeah, I'm gonna ship this. Oh, that's good as well. Uh If I just punch the 3-5, I can develop this Dark Nemesis, which is probably better. How much damage is the Razorback? It's only 4 more damage. I have, was it, 9, 13, 15 damage on board. Which uh, actually would have been lethal <laughs> if the Circle of Life didn't heal, but of course it does this with the cards 4. Um... Okay, I think I'll do I think I'll do the straightforward play. So we're gonna we're gonna do a little gravity well. Around here we'll play play the Razorback. Kill this. I'm gonna go stand in a safe spot, basically. Oh I know, I should have blocked this, I'm an idiot. Uh, I will attack them, I think. What's this got? Provoke. Okay. Yeah, I should have. Well, they can always punch something and then play. Yeah, cool. All right. Huh. We did it. We ran them out of stuff. My opponent played premium removal on all of my units. Three wins. Cozy three and one. I honestly, that's not bad considering how weak the deck looked. Um, I think we maybe played against a couple of less experienced opponents just from the feel of it. But that was a uh, that was quite fun actually. Those games were kind of interesting. The magma player obviously smushed us into the ground, but um, you know if they didn't have chaos elemental on their first turn, we might have been we might have been able to make a, a competitive game of it. Like they just got so much tempo off the natural selections, but without that, we might have been alright. So maybe the deck was better than I gave it credit for. Someone asked me in a, a recent video whether if I had orbs after the end of the draft I could uh, crack them open. So why not? Let's 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 open some packs. Or well, let's open these two packs. What do we got? Frostbone, Phoenix Fire, basic cards here, Widowmaker. I quite like the change to Widowmaker, although the, the extra draw cards feel really odd in two draw. Ghostlings especially. Jade Monk. Now a 3-mana 4-3. This card seems quite good now, actually. The 4-mana 4-4 four four version was not super exciting. But I think this one might be efficient enough to see some play. I don't know if people play it on ladder, but it does seem like a card, the kind of card that could. Especially in 2-draw, you're not you're incentivized for dumping your hand repeatedly and not super punished for including cards that aren't just consistent gas. But at the same time, you do also benefit from drawing two Phoenix Fires every turn, so maybe it's not worth it. I don't really understand the design of this card. Like, I love the old Holograph Keeper as well, so it makes this one a bit of a shame. Um, but I genuinely think that, like, <clears throat> I, I don't... The Frenzy and the Giving Provoke are completely different things, and it's got like kind of a bad defensive stat line. I guess maybe the idea is you can develop this aggressive minion that's kind of squishy but can protect itself by giving something else Provoke. I guess that's the plan. But like anything that, you know, for a long time in Duelist, it was the case that if you, if you stick a minion, and you start your turn with like a decent minion in play, you probably just kill your opponent anyway. Um, because once they stop being able to clear your board every turn, you can make the favorable trades, you can punish them with stuff like Immo and Divine Bond and things. So like a lot of the time, if you're going to be able to get value from that ability, you could play a different card that punished your opponent much harder for leaving your leaving you with stuff. Um, there is certainly no lack of such, uh, such effects in the game. What have we got here? Fenrir. I, I like the change to Fenrir. 
Um, I think having this be a good card is kind of... I mean, it wasn't terrible at 3-2-3-2. It was just a lot of pressure. But um, having this be like a strong mid-range card is kind of nice. We love a heart. Oh, my God. Oh. Excuse me. We do love a heart sister. Always been a staple for very, very good reason. Bone chill barrier. I, I have never particularly liked this card, but it does play in work. With glacial elemental and stuff. Oh, hey, look. It's the combo. It is really arbitrary that these barriers are Vespers. Like, I don't know why they are Vespers. I thought Vespers were like creatures. You know, like little beasts. Uh, or, in this case, elementals, I guess. I don't know what makes these walls Vespers and the other walls not Vespers. Um, other than, you know, they wanted this to be a combo. But not every wall to be a combo. Who knows? Oh, it's an... In I was about to be like, oh, it's an entirely Vanal pack. And then remembered that it is a Vanal pack. Um... It's part of the uh, you know, leveling up the factions when you start playing. Um, I I have always liked Mark of Solitude. I always I like living the dream. I I appreciate buff spells that get small minions immediately out of range of like one for one with cheap removal because it's it's such a problem that if you have like like let's take Killing Edge as an example, it gives the same amount of power. I'll give me more because you can go face with it. But it's um so it's it's very powerful, but it's also relatively punishable because the minion if you killing edge a one one, it's a five three, it dies to Phoenix Fire, it dies to lasting judgment, whatever else. I remember back in the day before Blood of Air existed. Um, I used to play Dust Whaler in Vitruvian. Six mana, three, four flyer. Uh, opening Gambit, deal three damage to all enemies in a row. I used to play Dust Whaler in Vet to deal with Sun High decks because it killed. It would kill a Killing Edge Heart Seeker and then fly over to deal or trade with the next range unit. Um, it was actually it was surprisingly good tech. Play a six mana. Gauntlet staple uh, on ladder because the faction had so few removal options um, for ranged units. That was a massive digression. Fun memory though, I quite like Dust Whaler. Um, I seem to remember I had. It, it, it featured in a couple of my videos back in the day. I can't remember to dig them up and see what I was doing with it. Right, I think that wraps us up for the day. It's quite an interesting draft experience, actually. The deck was weaker than I hoped, but performed pretty well. Got the three and one. Um, I haven't been tracking my records. Maybe I should, but I think we've done. I think we've had like a two, two, one or two four O's. We've had a couple of four O's, I think, and then we had one four O that was like two of my opponents AFK. So it didn't really count. Um, and then the rest have been three ones. Um, which is a pretty solid performance, kind of on par with what I'd expect of myself. Um, but I wonder if we can push the envelope a little bit, try and get try and get more of those four O's, see what the new spicy rewards are. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to go to bed. Bye, everybody. See you next time.